If there's one thing that I've learned from covering the Raiders here at Chat Sports, it's Raider Nation has a lot of different opinions. But I truly, truly believe that for the first time in maybe the history of literally ever, Raider Nation is together on one point. This organization, this team needs to add a right tackle because I'm sorry, Alex Leatherwood, he's a hazard. So if you want the Raiders to sign a right tackle, hit that subscribe button because if they do, we're going live and we're going to be celebrating because for the love of God, this team needs some car insurance. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Coming up here on today's show, I figured I'd give you nine overreactions after the Raiders' 15-13 win against the Dolphins. Is it a preseason game? Yes. But I'm a passionate human being, and I've seen a lot of top trending stories out there. So I'm going to hit the top nine coming up here today. Now, I wouldn't be able to do today's show if it wasn't for our amazing sponsor, Panda Subs. If you haven't already gotten started with them, the reason why I'm not hungover this morning is because... I take a scoop of Panda Sups when I go to bed, and then I take it in the morning as well because y'all kicked my butt yesterday on our live show. Shout out to all of y'all. Over 50,000 people tuned in. We had a hell of a time, and we're going to give some shout outs here at the end of today's show. So let's go to the very first overreaction here. Alex Leatherwood can't play right tackle. This one's not an overreaction. This one's for just win, babies. Believe it, baby. I've tweeted it out. I've said it for over a year now. I do not understand what the heck the Raiders are doing continuing to put Leatherwood out there at right tackle. He's a liability. He's a hazard. There are a bunch of different synonyms that I can throw out there that should illustrate to everyone that he shouldn't be on the right side. He was benched in the first half, did return to start the third quarter, but in 23 snaps he allowed a sack, a hit, and a hurry. I hold my breath when Jared Stidham... I hold my breath when Nick Mullins and Chase Garbers are out there. I can't hold my breath for an entire four quarters because if he's blocking and it's DC out there, it's not good. So stop the Leatherwood at right tackle experiment. I wasn't a science major, but I also know that certain experiments, you don't keep doing them because if you try to do it over and over and over and over again, that's the definition of insanity said by Albert Einstein. So put down the right tackle experiment. If you want to play Leatherwood, put him at guard. That's the position he's best at. You know how I know? Studied film on him before when he came out of Alabama. Look at the quotes that Nick Saban had to say about him because he's a pretty smart football mind if you ask me. And then on top of that, he got better at guard last season as the season continued to go on and on. The next overreaction coming up here right now is the Raiders' biggest need. It's right tackle. Guess what? Yeah, four just win babies again. Believe it, baby. You can invest a lot of money into your offense. Derek Carr extension. Devontae Adams trade. Hunter Renfro extension. Yeah, one of the best tight ends in all of football, Darren Waller. But it's not going to matter because if you trot out Leatherwood there week one against the Chargers where you're going up against Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, good luck. It's not going to be pretty. So in the fact that Brandon Parker, he's out for the season, Thayer Munford has been battling an injury, which he's had some injury issues in the past. I've just explained to y'all my passion of Alex Leatherwood can't play right tackle. So if I'm Josh McDaniels, if I'm Dave Ziegler, there are two names that I am going to keep in mind right now. The first, either you can make a trade for Eagles' Andre Dillard, who was drafted in the first round back in 2019, but he's a backup because they've had some other players step up for them. I'd say offer them a fourth-round pick for him. Or you go out and sign Darrell Williams, who has proven every single year that he has played right tackle. He's been a reliable piece. Hell, Williams is even probably a better guard than Lester Kahn. He's played well, but make a move for the love of God. And if you want the Raiders to sign either Williams or make a trade for Andre Dillard, please like this video right now. Let's go to the next overreaction here after the Raiders game up against the Miami Dolphins. And I'm just going to be doing shows like this, I think, all season long. So if you like the overreaction show, please let me know it down in the comments. Lester Cotton, he's not ready to start. I've seen a lot of people throw him out there as a loser after this game. I'm going to say pump the brakes here a little bit. I do think this is a little bit of an overreaction. And the reason why I say that is, did he struggle against Miami? Yes, he did. Did he give up a sack? Yes, he did. But I looked at the tape, and I thought he played well the first two preseason games. He looks like a strong player. I also know this. Football, crazy idea. 
It's a team sport. And when the player next to you is really struggling, cough, cough, Alex Leatherwood, it makes your job a lot more difficult. Now, I'm not saying the sack he gave up was Leatherwood's fault, but I also know that whole right side of the line struggled yesterday, and I actually do have faith that Cotton can start at right guard for the Raiders this upcoming season. Other some, we'll say, important offensive line notes that I've gathered. I thought Parham starting over John Simpson at left guard was very telling. I've told you all for a while that I believe Parham is a top five offensive lineman on this team, and I thought he played well at guard. Illuminor, he looked really good. If I was the Raiders right now and I didn't know what's going on with Munford, you don't have Parker and Alex Otherwood's been what Alex Otherwood has been, I would flirt with the idea of trotting out Jermaine Illuminor at right tackle. He's been pretty damn good to me. And then I would say right now the only positions that are locked, Colt Miller, he's going to be your left tackle. Andre James is going to be your center. But left guard, right guard, right tackle, called in the air because uh, everything's up for grabs at this point. So when you think about the offensive line, y'all, and this show is about being real, right? When you sit down with your kids, maybe at home, hopefully you're honest with them. When you sit down with your parents, hopefully you're honest with them. Because for me, I am always a very transparent human being. That's what I try to do. But I also respect the nation as well because that's what they've always given to me. So be honest with me. Be honest with yourselves. Why for yes and for no? Do you have confidence in the Raiders' offensive line? My answer is no. How can anybody have confidence in this line? I watched last season, not great. I watched three games in the preseason, not great. I get that you don't have Colton Miller out there, but I don't understand how you can go into a situation in the preseason with all this money that they have in salary cap and be like, yep, I think this is what we're going to roll with. If this is the line you roll with, you're going to have some Raider fans doing some lines. Let's go to the next overreactions here. We got the quarterback two battle still up for grabs. This one is for just win babies. Believe it, baby. Week one, NFL Hall of Fame game, right? Jared Stidham won that one. The next game against Minnesota, I thought Nick Mullins played better. I don't really think anybody really shined against Miami thanks to the offensive line play because you could tell that the Raiders were trying to push the ball down the field. Unfortunately, the line couldn't block long enough, so McDaniels went to a totally different offensive scheme. Shout out to Mick Lombardi as well. Where then they just went to short intermediate passing. And, yeah, no quarterback really threw an interception. No quarterback threw a touchdown. Here are the numbers that they had against the Dolphins. Stidham, 7-10, 80 yards. Garver, 6-9. And Mullen, 6-9. Nice. 54 yards, 39 yards. Garver's also added 44 rushing yards. But what I wanted to see was more vertical passing. I wanted to see the offense work, and I really didn't feel like I could get a good read on any of the quarterbacks, especially Nick Mullins, because every time Mullins dropped back, it was like, had hands in his face, man, which is never a good sign. Now, if you guys are trying to bulk up a little bit this season, because let's face it, it's football season, then go to pandasups.com, use promo code TEST to get 25% off. Pandasups just launched their brand new testosterone booster, which you can get by scanning this QR code right here to the right of me. And a lot of times people are like, Mitch, man, you're drinking a lot on shows. How do you continue to stay in shape? I take Panda Sup's products. That is the most real thing that I can tell you. Is anybody who's like over the age of 40? Shit, even I'm almost 30 now. You ever wish like you could just be 20 again and work out a few times? You're like, man, I got my abs back. I'm looking good. Test Booster is not only going to make you feel like you're 20 years old, it's going to make your workouts a lot more effective. And I mean, I'm just going to say it because, you know, it's gonna, your ladies are going to like it too. That's just me being real with y'all. So get your hands on some test boosters. Maybe she get her hands on you. Panasups.com. Code test. 25% off. Let's talk about the wide receivers now because I've seen this overreaction. The Raiders have their top three wide receivers as it stands right now. I think they do. And the reason why I'm going to go with this is because sometimes you got to pick up on what you don't see in a preseason game. And I'm giving this one for just win, babies, because three receivers did not travel to the game against the Dolphins. Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, the man pictured on screen, Matt Collins. Now, I don't know if Hollins is going to get the most reps at wide receiver three behind Adams and Renfro, because personally, I still think Keelan Cole, Tyron Johnson are talented. Cole saw five targets. Tyron Johnson saw seven targets this past game. Shit. Hell, I even thought... Tight end Jasper Horstead looked pretty damn impressive going up and getting the football. He led the team in receiving yards. But I do truly believe that the Raiders right now value Matt Collins' ability in the special teams game a lot more than what he values Keelan Cole and Tyron Johnson. So when you think about some of these Raiders players that are going to be making the roster, 
I would say Adams, Holland, Keelan, Tyron, Hunter Renfro, those are going to be your five locks. After that, though, it is up in the air with Dylan Stoner, Isaiah Zuber, Justin Hall, DJ Turner, and Chris Lacey because I know we have five good players. After that, though, it is a little bit of a coin flip. And speaking of DJ Turner, I'm going to go here with this next overreaction. Last week, there was a lot of people, especially after Kenny Young is released over the weekend, saying, man, there's a chance that the Raiders could keep four UDFAs this coming season on their 53-man roster. Not so fast. That's a little bit of an overreaction to me because the four UDFAs that I've been hearing a lot, a lot of people talk about, it's Sam Webb, Luke Masterson. Sam Webb's a corner. Luke Masterson's a linebacker out of Wake Forest. Darian Butler, another linebacker out of Arizona State. And the wide receiver, DJ Turner. Personally, I think the past two games, Butler has really struggled, especially in the passing game. I want linebackers that can cover. He has not been able to show me that he can cover. Sam Webb made a really nice fumble recovery. Honestly, should have had a touchdown, but they played it or called it dead. Masterson continues to impress me. And then DJ Turner, he had himself a hell of a game. It was probably one of the MVPs against the Vikings, but saw only one target and played in the fourth quarter of this pass game. So if I was to tell you, okay, I right now believe that these are your top four UDFAs to make the roster. Let's say you're McDaniels. Let's say you're Josh yeah, McDaniels, let's say you're Dave Ziegler. you got a tough decision to make. Are you going to keep Sam Webb? Type 48. What about linebacker Darian Butler? 58. Type 59 if you're going to keep Masterson. Or type 19 if you're going to keep DJ Turner. This was a difficult decision. And it's amazing to me how quick things can change. But when I did my 53-man roster projection, I had the Raiders keeping DJ Turner. After seeing this game, after seeing his usage and the way that he played in the fourth quarter where he was playing in the fourth quarter, I don't think that's a good sign. I've heard from some people out there that Lucas Masterson is one of the reasons why they moved on from Kenny Young and Butler's inability to cover. Ah, man, I'm going to have to give the nod to Lucas Masterson right now. We got three more overreactions to get to here on the Raiders report. To Sean Bauer, a lock to make the 53. I wish I could give this four just win baby heads. I just can't do it. I do think it's a little bit of an overreaction for the simple fact of what type of defense are the Raiders going to run. And I said this after my post-game reaction show. I also did some winners and losers late last night. I thought that Bauer was the MVP of this game. He was flying all over the football field. And realistically, I think you can make an argument that Bauer right now has been the best defensive player in the preseason. 32 pass rush snaps. Eight pressures, three sacks. I truly believe that right now you're seeing this Raiders organization be like, you know what? I think we're better in a 4-2-5 defense. Four defensive ends, two linebackers, five defensive backs. Now, I wish and I still think that he has a legitimate chance to make it. However, when you look at the Raiders' depth chart, Crosby, Jones, Locks. As far as I'm concerned, Malcolm Koontz, he's a lock as well. He's been very impressive to me. I'll keep you guys up to date on Jordan Jenkins, who left with a... Knee injury, still don't have any updates on that. But if they have to pick between Cleveland Furl or Bauer, you can technically keep Bauer over Furl, but you're going to end up eating $10 million essentially. I don't know how many defensive ends this team keeps. I hope Bauer makes it because as far as I'm concerned, in the preseason, it's about opportunities, and he's made the most of his opportunities. Every single show, y'all, I always tell y'all, hey, hit me up, IG, Twitter, stay up to date on everything going on around Raider Nation. And a lot of times... You get really cool stories that can happen out of it. So please scan that QR code. Give me a follow on Instagram. But I do have something really, really cool to say. So my guy Matthew messaged me on Instagram, what is it, about like a week ago. And he said, hey, my daughter and I were in the hospital. Shout out to Michaela. She's got to be one of the strongest young girls I've ever seen. 12 years old, had a life-threatening experience. Her appendix burst, and it was so bad that the doctors told them if they would have showed up just a few hours later, she wouldn't have made it. So she's in the hospital for over two weeks. They showed that they were watching the Raiders report because they had to get Raiders content, and they were stuck in a hospital. So shout out to Matthew. Shout out to Michaela. We went out for lunch. My girlfriend Alex, Chuck, decided to join in the fun as well. Went out to Fort Worth, got some really amazing brunch food. But this is why I tell you all to hit me up on social media because you can get really, really cool experiences like this. So please, don't ever uh, – don't ever think that I don't try to reach out. And if you could, 
seriously, spam Michaela because that's one of the strongest young girls that I have ever met. So appreciate that y'all decided to come out and have lunch with me. All right, let's keep this show rolling here. Jonathan Hankins, best one-stopper on the Raiders for just win, babies. I was a little bit nervous that Hankins wasn't going to be ready or he maybe he wouldn't look 100% healthy. I talked to him. He said, I don't know if I'm going to play in this game. Ends up playing in the game and instantly boosted the run defense. The Raiders got shredded by the Minnesota Vikings last week, giving up 5.7 yards per carry. They only gave up 37 rushing yards this game. Obviously, Hankins wasn't in there entirely. He looked fresh. He looked healthy. Made a big-time impact in Patrick Graham's system. It's good to have big-time Hank back. Let's go to the last overreaction. Trayvon Mullen, cornerback two. The reason why this has been brought up a lot is because Matt Collins didn't make the trip. And I said that that's very telling because then you have your top three wide receivers. In terms of Trayvon Mullen, I am going to say this is a little bit of an overreaction. And is Mullen going to make the team? Yes, he's one, of, he's one of our best corners when 100% healthy. However, I do think the reason why the Raiders did this is the Raiders knew Trayvon wasn't going to play. He's had too many injury issues out there. It doesn't make sense to throw him out there right now. Now, you might see him up against New England. That's a possibility. But also the fact that Anthony Averett and Rocky Sin, they have been battling some injuries. I personally just think McDaniels, Ziegler, Patrick Graham wanted to see those guys out on the field. So... I'm going to say it's an overreaction to think that Mullen is the cornerback, too, behind Nate Hobbs. But I do think that it's Mullen, uh, Rocky Sin, Anthony Averett. They're all battling it out to essentially be that second corner behind Hobbs. Good news is, though, I do actually think the Raiders have some pretty solid depth. All right, y'all, yesterday's show was just an absolute whirlwind. We crushed Dolphins today on and off the field. But there were... A lot of people that sent in Super Chats yesterday. And again, Super Chats go to us getting extra studio time, extra studio lights, creating jobs for people, being able to do extra giveaways. And I have a meeting with my bosses upcoming this week where I want to do an extra Raiders live show. I already give you guys two live shows every single week. I want a third one. Why? Because we got the best live show, I believe, on YouTube. And that's because of people like Raider Ron, Buddy Bear, Patrick B., Hootie Lord, Savannah Jean, and it's funny, it's Patrick and Savannah. I believe they're together, and they were sending in Super Chats left after right uh, yesterday. Also, Brandon Jasper, he sent in a $20 Super Chat before the show even started. That's dedication. Jason, Alex, Lucky Iris threw in a 50. Eugene threw in a 50. Jason threw in over 70. Alex D threw in a 50. Hell, Raiders podcast. I was actually checking out their YouTube today. It's, a, it's like a podcast with a dad, and there was a kid on there. They threw in over 70. Dean, Lori Pacheco, Steven, Luke, from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of hearts here at Chat Sports, thank you for supporting the content that we do. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, make sure you do so. I'm going to be live next on Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. But remember, these super chats are going to something, and I'm going to make an argument that the Raiders report, we deserve three live shows every week. So fingers crossed that that happens. And if nothing else happens, I'll see you guys Tuesday. But I'm honest with you all, I'm hoping I'm back tomorrow or even a little bit later on tonight because for the love of God, the Raiders need a right tackle.